on a manoeuvring course, isn't it? See if I can hit the cones. Whoever's binging my messenger, will you stop binging my messenger when I'm doing a bit of serious <laughs> reversing? It's getting mad, isn't it? Yeah. The Great Hall. That's impressive when you're walking in there. Oh. I think yeah. when we first came here years ago, yeah. when we were a lot younger, we yeah. with mum and dad, yeah. and I think I took a picture of the mum and dad and me. Yeah, standing by. This. It's merchant class. Yeah. 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 Look at that. Wow. Shall we stood right here? Yeah. It's a navy class, merchant navy class. It's a little bit dark in here, it's in trouble. And over here, that's the evening star. Oh wow. You look at the size of the wheels. Go on, yeah. little roof. You're five foot four, aren't you? So those are five foot driving wheels, aren't they? Yeah. You feel absolutely tiny next to these, don't you? Yeah. You've got to go and have a look inside. So each year, remember all those who've suffered and died in war. Hundred years, obviously, since the armistice. And that's a railway museum's fallen railway database contains individual stories of over 20,000 railway men who died in the First World War. And 5,000 photographs. Wow. Nurse's mess. Have a look. Like a ghost, doesn't it? <laughs> Don't remember this, do you? World followed load, year in, year out. They were always the same lines of blanketed figures and stretchers and the same straggling processions of walking wounded. This is the names. There's obviously photos of the 20,000. Beat a good tank engine. Another one here. 
There's a ch channel tunnel equipment. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> this is Pet. Tiny locomotive called Pet. It's the equivalent of a forklift truck. They move trucks across the vast and busy railway works at Crewe on tracks just one foot six inches wide. Yep. Building the Channel Tunnel between England and France was the biggest engineering project of the late 20th century, following an industrial tra tradition that dates back to at least the 16th century. Rails helped transport workers, equipment and waste in and out of the tunnel. And this work from 1990 to 94 and removed, helped remove, 4.3 million cubic metres of earth and rock. And they had 12 of these engines working. They deposited it at Shakespeare Cliff near Dover. The spoil increased the size of the UK by 90 acres. And 12 of these engines were built. This is named Lawrence. So this is Lawrence. I think they'd probably do a little bit of uh, restoring on Lawrence, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. Post office train. I actually once went down the post office tunnels where they used to run these engines. From 1927 to 2003, four million letters a day travelled beneath London on this narrow gauge railway. And it was electric. So much to see here, isn't yeah. there? Look at this GWR rail car. Like futuristic, that is, isn't it? <laughs> Railway coaches from the Eastern Counties. Yeah, I think that's probably in need of a bit of restoration as well. Oh. Love these great western tra uh, train engines though. This is the Load Star. Yep, and just step. <laughs> it has greasy parts. <laughs> That's a unique view, isn't it? Yeah. Of an engine. And tender. Sorry? The huge parts are on Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, look at the steam pipes in the back. All the way back here. It's great, isn't it? It's on the railway. Yeah. So we've been we've been pulled by what an engine like this, haven't we? Yeah. When you go on the Festinial railway. Yeah. 
She's never keen on steam. <laughs> Sometimes difficult to take all of the the size of these engines in, isn't it? Look at the size of the wheels on this. Okay, so what's famous about this then? It broke the record, didn't it? Yeah. It's the, fast the land speed record, but it's not that. The rail speed record. Rail speed record. Rail speed steam record. And then 1930. And it still holds it. It still holds it, yeah. It was a very unusual design at the time, wasn't it? Yeah. So this is Mallard. That's streamlined. Yeah. So sort of set the pattern really for diesel engines of the future, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Including Eurostar and yeah. TGV. Built in Doncaster. Yeah. It's a little bit different, isn't it? Lovely looking engine, isn't it? It's the Duchess of Hamilton. Built in Crewe. 1938, just before the war. Yeah. So this was built for the West Coast route in 1938, with bigger boilers, so they could raise more steam for the steep climbs. Look at this monster. Oh, wow. That is a, that's massive isn't it? Go and stand by it so we can see how big it is. Ridiculously big, isn't it? The cow catcher on the front. <laughs> Quite sure what that's doing down there. But that is that is an absolute monster. I mean, look how tall it is. got to be how tall is that I mean I only just don't come up to the running boards do I yeah <laughs> how tall it must be must be 15 foot tall must not it yeah. This is KF17 and it says it's the largest locomotive in their collection, one of the largest ever built in Britain, designed for a line in China that has steep hills and weak bridges so it needed to be large and powerful without putting huge weight on each axle. So we've got four driving wheels each side. You can't really see this, unfortunately, but let's see if we take a picture. Wow, 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 wow. So it was a, a worm feed to, to put the coal into the firebox. So you, didn't, you weren't shoveling it. No. Right, we'd feed it through into the firebox there. Come on. Probably took so much coal, they probably didn't have enough people to do the shoveling. Oof. So, this is the Bullet Train Series O leading car. 
was presented to the National Railway Museum by the West Japanese West Japan Railway Company. So please mind your head. I'm presuming that's where the guard sit. Look at these. It's like an aircraft, isn't it? Reminds me of a ferry, I don't know, as much as a train. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's huge. So there's a Eurostar. So it's Andrew Ditton. Andrew Ditton would know what this is, wouldn't he? Yeah. Doesn't actually say, does it? Yeah. Look at the bullet train, though. It looked like a bullet, didn't it? That's 37 euro star. So it holds the British rail speed record of 208 miles an hour. Right, so you saw the fastest steam train. Yeah. So this is the fastest, well, it's the world speed record, uh, sorry, a world speed record, it's British rail speed record of 208 miles an hour. Model railway. Not stopping. Mm. Look at that. Here's the great western one. Yeah. Is there another one coming around in a minute? Yeah. 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 Dried up red bed. It's quite a light yet, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's it. I can't believe it was just you and one of the staff. That's a diesel engine and a half, isn't it? Salsa diesel engine. We said there were power stations on wheels, these. The engine drove a generator which made electricity. Electricity drove the power motors which drove the wheels. Well, precautions against crankcase explosions. You wouldn't want a crankcase explosion with one of these. <laughs> See, they had engines probably this size in telephone exchanges for, as generators. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. Class 31. See the crank crankcase here. Besides oh, 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 the camshafts. 
Right, this is the bit where my microphone fell out so there was no sound so I'm just going to record over this. This was the uh, Flying Scotsman um, coach and they used this right up until 2003 I think it said for the, as the dining car and very opulent it was too. Yeah, Britain's biggest sandwich maker. <laughs> that was British Rail. Not always the best sandwiches no, of course. No. <laughs> There's a picture of the locomotive. And we went on it, didn't we, at Berry, but that time it's painted black. It's yeah. now been repainted green, hasn't it? Yeah. And we didn't realise when we went into the museum that the Flying Scotsman was actually at the museum. No. <laughs> which is a bit well, we didn't know that. Which is a bit strange. So there it is. I'm not quite sure why the, the tender was boarded up there. Perhaps they were doing a bit of work on it. But uh, there's the locomotive in its 60103 number. Yeah, I don't remember if that's a number that had when we went on it. Yeah, I think so. I've got a picture of when we went on it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I saw it, I was a little bit mesmerised by it. I thought, oh, mm. it's Flying Scotsman's here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Some really shiny driving rods there. I was sort of taken in by that. Yeah. Uh, sort approaching of a, it from the front, isn't it? Yeah, from the front, and I sort of stuck, got stuck here for a little while yeah. just looking at it. Yeah, it said it says National um, Railway Museum on the front of it. Yeah, so it, it, I think it's there for a, a, I don't know, a few repairs or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, so we we were in this other hall, and we didn't really realise this hall was there, and it's fantastic in there. There's all sorts yeah. of railway memorabilia. I, I, I think I said it was like Hall um, Warehouse 13, I don't know if anyone watches that program. Loads and loads of stuff in there. You yeah. know, everything to do with railways. Must have gotten them from all the stations, mustn't they? Yeah, in collectors. Here we go, I'll do a bit of overdubbing here now. Yeah. So if, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe. Hit that notifications icon and we'll catch up with you soon. Bye then. <laughs> <laughs>